Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alan, this is my life in Taiwan, and welcome to Nanto County's spectacular Sun Moon Lake. Yes, ordinarily when I introduce a location to you in Taiwan as spectacular, I mean exactly what I say. But looking at the state of this lake, it is currently anything but spectacular and that's because Taiwan is currently in the midst of its worst drought for as many as 56 years. Let's take a little bit of a look around the lake and share some stats and figures and take a look at how this drought is affecting my life in Taiwan. So before we get started on today's topic, I want to do something a little bit different and give you a preview of my next video in which I began my journey of repaying my debt to Taiwan by cooking 300 incredibly traditional Taiwanese dishes and delivering them to some local charities in my area. An absolutely huge project that took lots of time planning as well as executing. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss that video when it's published, then please hit the subscribe button just underneath the video. It really helps the channel out a lot and it's free. Uh, each of these videos I make on my channel takes about 10 or 20 hours to prepare and edit for you guys. And it takes you just a second to hit that subscribe button. So why not? Let's make this relationship official by you becoming a Life in Taiwan subscriber today. But anyway, yes, a very unspectacular, half-empty lake. But right behind me, an incredibly spectacular building. This is Wenwu Temple, built by the Japanese during their occupation. And quite ironically, it was built due to the rising water levels in the lake after the Japanese had built some hydroelectric dams, which in turn meant the two former temples that were situated down by the lake had to be moved to avoid disappearing underwater. But as spectacular as the temple building itself is, there's something I want to share with you a little bit closer down towards the lake. Okay, so the location that I actually wanted to take you to, I just found out it's been closed for renovation, but there's actually a set of steps from the lake up to the temple that actually before the ring road around the lake was built used to be the only way that you could reach this temple. You would take a boat across the lake to the pier and walk up the 366 steps uh, to reach the temple. But apparently the stairway is lined with hundreds, maybe thousands of these uh, wind chimes and each one has a, a wish or a hope that somebody has written on it. So I thought that while I'm here I would come and take part in this very traditional Taiwanese activity so unfortunately the stairway is closed as I mentioned but it seems that the new location for these wind chimes is right here outside of the temple so as you can see I've gone with my wish which is just a simple please rain I'm sure the gods are looking down on me and if I leave that there fingers crossed this wish comes true pretty soon because the problem is pretty bad and let's go have a chat about how bad it might actually get Okay, so I've mentioned many times before, Taiwan is a very rainy country ordinarily. And when it rains, it rains incredibly hard. And in fact, flooding has actually been a big problem in some locations in the past. But 2020 saw one of the lowest rainfalls in recent history. Rainfall declined to between 20 and 60% of the historical average, depending on the location. And as such, reservoirs all around the country are at dangerously low levels. Taiwan News reported that Zhengwen Reservoir in Jiayi County was down to 15% of its capacity. Liutan Reservoir in Miaoli was down to 13.7%. And Deji Reservoir in Taichung was down to an alarming 8 
8% of capacity. Pretty alarming numbers, especially for a country whose two major industries are agriculture and silicon chips, both of which rely heavily on large amounts of water for their success. But some people have said that Taiwan has absolutely no right to be suffering from a drought, seeing as their annual rainfall is 2.6 times the global average. So what's going on? Is it as simple as no rain equals no water? Or is there something a little bit fishy going on? Well, of course, yes, uh, a lack of rain is gonna seriously affect water levels in the reservoirs, but depending on which newspaper you read, there are a lot of people that are criticizing and attacking the government, uh, blaming them for not seeing the problem coming earlier and not putting systems into place in order to avoid this calamity that is currently going on. The president has now set up a drought emergency response center, as well as going down the superstitious route, as I did today, and she's asked the gods to please bless us with rain and save us from this problem. But other than the politics, there are some other factors that we could look at that have led us into this mess. One of which, when talking about agriculture, is that many people have criticized Taiwan's outdated uh, irrigation system and the irrigation channels are old and broken. And as much as 50% of the water that is supposed to be reaching the farmers actually leaks away through breaks and cracks in the irrigation channels. Not to mention another 25% that evaporates, meaning that of the 100% of the water that's supposed to reach the farmers, actually only 25% of it does so. For an island that uses 70% of its water on agriculture, this is indeed a huge problem and could be one of the major reasons that a dry spell can lead us into a serious drought. And apparently financial losses in the agricultural industry have already topped 400 million NT. Things are really not looking good for the farmers, so I hope my little wind chime can go some way to fixing the problem as soon as possible. Okay, so I've actually managed to find a way down to the edge of the lake and as you can see it's a pretty desolate site. Water levels absolutely all-time lows and it just looks a bit like a, uh, a barren wasteland. But anyway, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just agriculture that heavily depends on a strong water supply. Here in Taiwan, we have some of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world. And apparently, I didn't know this, but making silicon chips requires huge amounts of water. Therefore, huge companies like TSMC and UMC are actually having to transport water in tankers from more plentiful reservoirs in the north down to their factories in the central region and in the south in order to keep up production levels. Apparently TSMC and UMC account for 60% of the world market of silicon chips. Therefore production disruption due to a water shortage would almost certainly affect technology production worldwide. So it's definitely in the Taiwan government's best interests to keep these firms running and supplied with water and as such they have pledged to increase water supply to these firms. And one other reason that has maybe led to this water shortage is that the reservoirs in the country are not actually able to hold as much water as they used to. Sand and sediment has built up so much in all of the country's reservoirs that their capacity is actually much lower than they were designed to be. But the government have reacted to this and tried to solve this problem by dredging, uh, dredging and getting rid of the sediment. But I feel like this is a little bit late in English. We have an expression to lock the stable door after the horse is bolted. And I certainly think that's the case here as a cleaned out sediment free reservoir is absolutely no use if there's no water to fill it up. Right, okay, so as you can see, this measurement marker that is supposed to sort of measure the level of water in Sun Moon Lake is absolutely bone dry, hasn't seen water for a long time, it looks like. And this is a perfect demonstration of the problem. But what about how this problem actually affects the people of Taiwan? Is it possible that the country can completely run out of water and people can lose their lives? Well, in theory, yes, it has happened in other countries before, but I do feel that the government are trying their best to react to the situation and put some certain measures in place. As I mentioned, some of them may be a little bit too late. In Taichung, where I live, every Tuesday and Wednesday, the water is shut off for 48 hours. 
meaning that a million people in central Taiwan are inconvenienced and have to go visit one of the local water tanks to get their water if their house doesn't have uh, a sufficient enough uh, water supply in the water tank. Personally, I think I'm rather lucky as my apartment building seems to have a big enough water tank to cater for the few apartments that are there, but I certainly know that other people aren't as lucky and a lot of businesses are having to close for two days, meaning that people are losing money and this is actually really affecting people on a day-to-day -day basis. Although I did read about one particular positive story where a gentleman found his iPhone phone in Sun Moon Lake that he dropped here last year. It disappeared to the bottom of the lake, but since the water levels have, uh, have gone down so much, somebody found his phone, returned it to him, and it was in perfect working order. So it's not all bad for everybody, but I do know that there are lots of people suffering because of this, which is where my question on this video comes back to you guys. How has this water shortage affected you? Are you in Taichung? Are you suffering because of the, the Ting Shui? Have you been to the temple to pray for rain? Are you worried it's going to get worse? Whatever you've got to say on the situation, please leave a comment down below and we'll have a bit of a chat as usual. Okay, so April 15th is the day of filming, meaning that plum rain season is almost upon us. So I hope that this is the last video I have to make on the subject and I hope that the heavens open very soon and bless us with an abundance of rainy goodness. But until it does, let's remember that we are all in this together. Yes, we can throw stones and accuse the government of making mistakes that have led to this situation, but it's not gonna bring rain any sooner by doing that. So let's remember, try your best to conserve water and save it for those that really need it. I'm doing my part by changing my weekly showering schedule to a monthly showering schedule, for which my girlfriend is of course incredibly grateful. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and getting to see how this drought is actually affecting Taiwan on a day-to-day -day basis. If you've liked the video, then please press that little thumbs up button as it really helps me uh, promote the video through the algorithm and help the channel a lot. And as I said, just takes a second for you to do it. Also, don't forget, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the next video coming on this channel is an absolute banger, a huge uh, repay Taiwan video. So please make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell so you get notifications when it's published. Don't miss it. I think you're gonna like it. But I think that's enough for now. Time to say adios, amigos. As for now, and as always, I'll see you next time in my life in Taiwan. Peace.